What will the best build be in NBA 2K24? What should you make in NBA 2K24? Well, today, I'm going to help you answer some of these questions by showing and telling you everything we know about the 2K24 builder while showing you what's also worked in the past. And then, of course, showing you what builds I have made day one of other 2Ks and what builds I am eyeing in 2K24. And not only that, I will be showing you what the 2K24 builder will look like and potentially what my my build will look like in 2k24 so drop a like for more helpful build videos when i have access to 2k24 and trust me you're going to want to subscribe and turn on all of my notifications because every year i get the game early and i will be releasing a ton of helpful videos for all of y'all and yes you can trust me these are my records over the years i'm a 90 plus one percent every single year i adjust to every 2k just like i'm going to be adjusting to nba 2k24 and nine times out of ten i always make one of the best builds day one of 2k which we'll be talking about more later but anyways let's get into the video what is good youtube it is your boy henry aka double h back with a yet another banger we got a lot of info in this video and a lot of stuff i want to talk about with this builder so if you missed any news about the builder or you're trying to learn some things before 2k24 comes out to kind of get an idea of what kind of build you want to make you definitely want to watch this entire video but anyways make sure you are subscribed with notice on if you want to watch some build videos to get you a better idea of what kind of builds you can make in 2k24 when it does release because i do make some of the best day one builds on youtube if we rewind and look what i posted day one of every 2k starting with 2k21 current gen which was the first year of me actually being an established creator day one of a 2k i made a 6-5 slasher that was my first build on 2k21 current gen that ended up being by far the best iso build you could have made that year then 2k21 next gen i made the most broken build on the game day one six foot seven power four which got way more bad is way more more attributes i mean the bill was literally broken then day one of 2k22 now keep in mind we're coming off of 21 where the shooting was a lot harder i rolled the dice after seeing mike wang say you could shoot with a 75 three-pointer and i went back to that 2k20 play style made a 65 three-pointer two-way playmaker build six foot five and that was my best build all year that was literally the best iso build in 2k22 not only that with 2k22 next gen i didn't play that until like a week in but when i did make a build i made it a fantastic 6-6 iso build which was like my only build on that game the entire year and i had a 90 win percent on that game as well and y'all saw my records earlier i have a 90 plus win percent on most of the 2ks and then 2k23 was probably my only and first miss i made a 6-6 power four that had a 25 driving dunk now i did go 100 and 0 with this build so it was good for the start, but once we started to see the meta a week into the game, I made the best build in the game. So I made the 6-9 meta build a week into the game. So we went four out of five for day one builds, which is pretty good. I'm not gonna lie. So hopefully we can get another hit when it comes to 2k24 day one and that's what this video is for i'm trying to help y'all as much as i can so you guys don't waste your vc and you guys actually make a good build to start 2k24 and now we're moving on to the good stuff we got all the builder information that we know now so let's go over the all of this really quick and we're starting with a lot of the stuff that uncle demi talked about and he said that this builder is going to be a lot like 2k20s but before we get into that here's a word from today's sponsor this video is sponsored by manscaped manscaped has the best men's below Below the waist grooming products around and honestly they have a lot of good products and deals that i'd personally like to recommend to y'all and show y'all personally i would recommend getting the manscaped performance package 4.0 so let's go over everything Manscaped was kind enough to send me in this package full of men's grooming and hygiene items. First, we got the Wee Whacker. This is really a superstar player right here. I mean, it's three in one, body, nose, and ear trimmer. And then we got the Lawn Mower. This thing right here will take care of everything down low and it'll also keep your beard nice and clean. And it also has a 4K LED light to make sure you can see everything down there. And we can't forget about our role players. We got the Crop Preserver and the Crop Reviver. Now the Preserver is gonna act as a deodorant down there and the Reviver is going to help that area keep cool, calm, and protected. This package also comes with a shed travel bag, anti-shaving boxer briefs, and a Manscaped bag to keep all these items safe and secure. So join over 8 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped and take advantage of this exclusive offer by using code DOUBLEH for 20% off at checkout 
at manscaped.com. Now back to what I was saying, like I said, Uncle Demi, another 2K YouTuber who works very closely with some of the devs. He has access to talking with them, discussing stuff. He said the 2K24 build system is going to be the freeform build system again for next gen. Now, everything I talk about, all the news I'm about is for next gen, current gen. I'm sorry, y'all, but y'all are going to get the same build system y'all had last year. So make sure you maybe you mow a couple lawns, maybe shovel a couple driveways in the winter and maybe get some money for that next gen console. You know what I'm saying? But we are going to be doing some 2K24 giveaways. So make sure you're subscribed. But anyways, like I was saying, Demi said that the builder is going to be the freeform builder. Okay, so you're still going to have this screen where you can pick your attributes and stuff. You know your wingspan all that good stuff but he said it's going to be a lot more balanced you know obviously like this year where you upgrade your three-pointer your mid-range moves that's going to stay the same but you're not going to be able to have you know an 80 plus ball handle a 90 plus three a 90 steal then an 85 dunk for con you're not going to be able to have all that it's going to be a lot more balanced and he's even recommended for us to go back and look at our 2k20 build stats maybe even our 2k19 build stats and kind of get a gist of what we want to make based off those stats so we can plug them in the 2k24 builder so it is going to be more role player ish than like superstar but obviously if you're good at the game you're going to make those lower stats good and he even made a build himself in the 2k23 builder that he said he's gonna make in 2k24 and here are the stats i mean he doesn't even have a three-pointer he does have a 75 mid-range he does get 95 plus in one category with the driving he barely reaches 80 with the playmaking and he has good defensive stats so if builds are looking like this where you have to sacrifice something uh, whether it's shooting finishing playmaking defense then i think this is going to be a really good year and a balanced year and definitely a year where you can get creative in the builder and i think it's gonna be really interesting so it's something to keep in mind and he even said you could still trash your build quote unquote if you want to get 99 three and then like 95 ball handle but then everything else is going to be like literally nothing so that should be interesting to see if people still go that route but you definitely want to go for more of a balanced route, I feel like. Another thing that was mentioned that's very important is all stats are going to matter this year. I know they say that every year, but it really seems like they're pinpointing that. We're going to talk about that more later on in this video. But something else to talk about is how that best animation, like the meta animations, are going to be at the highest rating. So you know how this year at a 75 speed ball, you unlocked the best dribble style in the game, which was Michael Jordan. So next year in 2K24, the best dribble style is going to be unlocked at like a 90-something speed ball. And it's the same thing with the dribbling. We do know that Steve Francis, one of the best dribble moves, is bumped up to a 95 ball handle in 2K24. It's probably going to be the same thing with the pass accuracy stuff. You know, the best pass style is not going to be at 75 pass anymore. It's probably going to be at like 90 pass accuracy now. Same with dunking. Quick drops is out the game. But if quick drops was in the game, it wouldn't be at an 80 drop driving dunk it'd probably be somewhere at like 95 driving dunk which is another thing that was talked about contact dunks are probably going to be bumped up higher than 85 i know we're always used to every year contact dunks at 85 or 86 but mike wang for some reason has not talked about any of the dunk caps he has talked about ball handle but nothing about dunking and i feel like that's because the contact dunks are gonna be bumped up you're gonna need like a 90 plus driving dunk to get contacts and that's something that uncle demi said in his video too so it's something to think about so yeah keep in mind if you want these meta animations you're gonna have to get those stats super high in the attribute categories another thing that was actually released today was the wmba builder screenshot and you can see the archetype says and, it, and i don't know if it usually says archetype or build but it says archetype and it says in Inside out playmaker which was a build name from 2k20 and uncle demi also confirmed in one of his videos that there are going to be a whole new types of build names in 2k24 so that's something else to look forward to hopefully there's a variety and hopefully we can just look at someone's build name and be like okay i know what he can do type of thing now moving on from the actual video information now we're going to be telling you all of the news that was all on twitter so if you don't have twitter drop your seat belts get the popcorn going because we got a lot of information to go over right here so right here we got a tweet from lamas so he said do you think we'll be able to iso and then guard ball like i do in stage this year and uncle demi responded is that even a question your two way is going to be cooking you need to take yourself to the 2k league and leave us normal people alone so basically he's saying two ways are back he's talked about this a lot how lockdowns two ways from 2k20 type of thing are going to be back and if you know anything about my play style i mean that fits me perfectly now right here you can read this whole paragraph but uncle demi's basically talking about pro play quick stops so quick stops are not going to be in 2k24 so for anybody that was thinking about making a play shot you're not going to be able to stop on a dime like 2k20 with the quick stops or anything but there are going to be a bunch of other pro play moves 
that are probably going to be the new meta and probably a lot of good moves. So there's not probably going to be like one meta move. Obviously, there's going to be like a best move. But there's going to be a lot of moves. So like, for example, you might think that Allen Iverson crossover is the best, you know, crossover in the game, but you might like, I don't know, like Russell Westbrook or LeBron James crossover better because you just like that animation better for your play style. Now, Uncle Demi did tweet out a couple screenshots, one saying that the 6-1 demigods were gone from 2K24. Now, a lot of people were questioning, are the 6-1s even demigods? But the all y'all forget, in 2K19, if you wanted to make a play shot type of build, if you wanted a 90 plus ball handle, you were going to get an 80 something three. You weren't going to get in the 90s. If you wanted to make a build with a 90 plus three, you were going to get like high 70s, low 80s ball handle. So these builds with 90 plus three, 90 plus ball handle that are like high up there, 95, 95, are not going to exist exist in 2k24 most likely and if they are you're gonna have a 25 dunk and you're gonna have a 25 everything in the defensive stats and your physicals might not even be maxed out either now, obviously most of this is speculation but this is all news coming from people straight from 2k so yeah my short guard builds y'all might want to bump up your height this year maybe and get more of a balanced build but if you want to go lower on the height like the 6-1 you're not going to come out here with a 99 ball handle and a 99 three-pointer that's for sure 99 three 95 ball like those builds are probably not going to exist anymore at least the ones that had a good driving dunk for quick drops and the ones that had you know a steel rating another one thank god the six nines are gone in 2k24 now obviously these heights still exist in the builder but like the actual like advantage you got at these heights where the six ones got crazy badge counts and stats and the six nines got crazy badge count stats and even badge tier you know advantages now let me know there probably is going to be a some kind of loophole in the 2k24 builder that we're going to eventually find i don't know if it's going to be a height or something else but i'm sure we'll find it eventually uh but hopefully there isn't a loophole like the six nines were this year now this is one of the most important tweets that is making me think about what build i'm making we were talking about the two ways earlier and how they could be back from 2k20 but baluba right here mike wayne the literally the gameplay director of 2k this dude creates the gameplay of 2k for all game modes okay so if you don't know who mike wang is that's who he is so if he says something it's true he said that for those who are asking what rating you need to be consistent depends on your skill and shot iq some will be deadly with a 75 three-pointer while others will go one for ten try out the build tester and 2k you with different nba players on hall of fame to get an idea of what you need for your build so basically he's saying if you're good at the game you're gonna be able to go crazy with a 75 three-pointer now if you guys remember that the last time he said that was 2k22 and in 2k22 i was going crazy with a 64 three-pointer he said the same thing in 2k20 i was going crazy with a 64 three-pointer now not all people can do that you have to be good out here to be shooting with a 60 something three-pointer so i'm thinking let me know in the comments do you guys think i should do it should i make some kind of build in 2k24 where i sacrifice my three a little bit get like a 60 something three-pointer still be able to shoot with that and then get high defense high ball handle and then decent driving you know what i'm saying so sacrifice that three-point rating should i do that and still be able to green should i be the first to test it out should i take the bullet should i be the play tester whatever for that kind of build let me know in the comments so here's another tweet from mike wing that i was talking about earlier with the ball handle this is the only animations he's talked about related to ratings so he said the steph and trey moves are gonna be at a 92 ball handle and the steve francis six size is gonna be at a 95 ball handle so any of my short guards or any guards that want to make a high ball handle build those are the ball handling ratings you're going to need and hey maybe if i sacrifice my three a lot don't go crazy on the dunk maybe i can make like a 6-6 with the 95 ball handle who knows if that's even allowed Another thing to know, another tweet from Mike Wang, there are over 150 new dribble animations for 2K24 with Pro Play. So no matter what your play style is, what your ball handle rating, there is going to be a ton of animations to choose from. So everyone's going to have their own play style. So anyone that likes to dribble or, you know, maybe has made builds in the past that only had an 80 ball handle could still get away with dribbling. This is some key information for you to think about in your build. Now, here's a long paragraph about what adrenaline boosts are going to be like. So to sum it up, basically, adrenaline boosts are not going to be like how they were in 2K23, where you dribble the ball and you lose an adrenaline. It's more going to be like if you get bumped by the defender to the point where you're not passing by him you're going to lose an adrenaline and it's going to affect your driving and shooting stats. So this is a big W for dribbling players and it's a big W for defensive players. So if I'm playing good defense, which is this is another reason why I think I'm going to make my build very good defensive stats. 
um because i'm gonna be trying to bump you i'm gonna be pressing you because if i make you lose a couple of adrenaline your stats gonna go down heavily basically they were talking about the percentages and they're saying like either the first bar could be five to ten percent so let's say you have like a 90 ball handle it could go down a little bit right but then the second bar could go like 15 to 20 percent and then by the third bar like we're talking 40 to 55 percent so if you have no adrenaline your most builds are gonna have like a 25 three-pointer and a 25 driving dunk <laughs> you know what i'm saying and even if you do it in the 90s it's still gonna be super low like 30s 40s so i think defense is gonna be crazy this year and that's why my build is definitely gonna have some defense and here's another tweet from uncle demi that you can read about right quick he's basically just talking about how there's going to be a play style for everybody at every height like every height is going to be viable and i hope this is true now here's a long paragraph you could pause on the screen if you want to this was the interview with playstation of mike wang and he was talking about how the badges are going to work in 2k24 and it's gonna be kind of like 2k17 again and basically this is all the information we have on it but the key thing i took from this not only are you going to be able to grind for certain badges again so if you want limitless range you need to shoot like deep shot instead of just like shooting for any shooting badge points so you have to grind for specific badges but the key thing like the main thing is that they said you're gonna get badges based on your play style. So that could mean a lot of things. That could mean, let's say I'm an ISO player that likes to shoot deep threes. They're gonna, no matter what my build is, height, am I just, if I keep shooting deep threes, am I gonna get Hall of Fame limitless range? Or is there going to be a limit to that based on my height and stuff? Or what if I start shooting a bunch of limitless range threes, right? I get my limitless range badge up and then I stop doing that. Does the badge go down? So I don't know. There's a lot of things to look into that. I mean, I was having dudes trolling up saying they were going to make a stretch big, only dunking Hall of Fame posterized. I don't know how that's going to work. That could even affect the builder too. Like what if in the builder, there's not badge counts per category like there are with defense, playmaking, finishing, all that. What if it's just a total badge count? And then the badges just spread into finishing, shooting, defense, playmaking based off your play style. I don't know. A lot of question marks with this. I'm sure we'll find out soon, but that's something to think about as well. Now, right here, Mike Wayne talks about how blocks got a buff in 2K24. So thank God. I mean, 2K22 chase downs were insane, but hopefully in 2K24, they're definitely better than 23, which is insane right here. So that's good. Another W for locks and stuff for me as well, because I'm going to be having a high block rating on my build. Now, here's an important uh, pull. A lot of the guys at 2K have been clearly talking about strength and the bully badge and anything around strength a lot. So I know we said last year, everyone was telling you, Oh, the strength is going to be really important. I'm telling you this year. I don't know. You're going to have to make an opinion for yourself, but we're going to, there's a lot of tweets in this video that I'm going to show you that are really, you know, looking towards strength being very important for locks, especially bigs and maybe even guards. So right here is a poll. It seems like they were definitely talking about it. The bully badge is definitely going to get a buff. I mean, people were saying it was useless. 63% said it was useless. I don't think it was useless, but it definitely wasn't worth getting or sacrificing other stats for strength because strength was like a really powerful, like it took a lot of overall away from you in the builder. Anyways, another tweet from Uncle Demi saying bumpy clamps and steals. Yeah, I mean, he's basically just saying locks are going to be crazy. And like I said earlier, the bumps are important, right? to lose adrenaline for your for the offensive player that you're guarding so once again i mean my build's gonna have great defense so this is a w for me now, this is another tweet anytime that dungle demi tweets out a poll or any guy that's like around 2k works with 2k or is in the 2k with talks with devs tweeting out a poll that means they're discussing it and trying to figure out a solution so you said what's the tallest build you should think should get your pro drill, pro drill move animations and yeah most people sit six nine so if you are a taller guy that wants those pro drill move animations you might not be able to get them, but pro play is there. So there's probably going to be a lot of animations for all heights, I'd uh, assume. Now, talking about the dunk meter, the dunk meter is going to be green or miss this year. So y'all remember my two-way hero build where I was just spamming the dunk meter. And a lot of the times I would just make them with whites. Yeah, if you don't green it this year, it's not going in. It's the same thing with jump shots. So that's something to think about if you want to make a slasher and you do want to go for like contacts with the dunk meter. You're gonna have to be good with the dunk meter, like very good because it's green or miss. If you do not green with the dunk meter, it's not going in. Now, right here is something that's gonna be key with my build as well. Mike Wang says that Faze got a buff in the mid range and a big nerf at the three. Now, if you guys remember me playing in 2K22, I used to fade middies a lot. I think I might go back with that. So I don't even think you need a crazy good mid range because this year, drop a like on the video if you didn't upgrade your mid range because it was like 70 KVC. And I'm sure most of us, including me, was still greening mid ranges with like a 40, 30, 50 mid range. So if I have like a 60 something mid range and they had a, they got a buff, 
I, that's all I'm going to need. I don't think I'm going to upgrade my mid range like crazy, but I'm definitely going to put it into my play style again because they got a buff. I mean, I thought they were already easy. And right here is another thing with greener miss. So yeah, whites do not go in at all, apparently for rec park all of that good stuff so before they were going in a little bit but now they're not going to be going in at all so huge w in my opinion that adds big skill gap and make sure you are subscribed because you know we're going to be bringing the all the goods with the jump shots so you're going to need a good jump shot this year for sure now right here uncle demi's basically talking about how iso is going to take skill this year thank god i've always been an iso player regardless if it took skill or not because 2k23 iso was way too easy so a lot of y'all boys that were iso in this year you might want to think about making a build that's going to be able to take screens again especially if you weren't ice when you know uh, years before this because it needs to go back to taking skill like at least for 2k20 2k19 type of thing another thing limitless takeoff is removed from 2k24 now what that probably means is your dunk rating is going to affect how far away you can jump from but you're not going to be jumping from the free throw line regardless unless you get a dunk rating high enough for the michael jordan uh dunk package which is already not an animation that you know triggers every time you go up for a dunk like it did with the quick drops another paragraph you could read about locks gonna be overpowered in 2k24 once again uncle demi talking about locks being op i mean we've seen it a thousand times by now i'm just he's reiterating it i mean i'm telling you if your build doesn't have defense it, it's gonna be a disadvantage and my build will have defense like it does every year now here's a key thing with jump shots no the number of jump shots are not coming back it's just gonna be nba jump shots which I think is a good thing. Uh, will they, will jump shots be closed or open depending on your jump shot rating, like your mid range three pointer? Probably. But uh, he did not confirm that completely, but I'm guessing it will be. And here's a list of all the new animations with pro play. There's going to be hundreds of new animations of jump shots, dunks, layups, dribbles, pass animations, signal movement, all that good stuff. So anything that you're seeing NBA players do in the NBA, it's probably going to be some kind of animation, regardless if it's any of these th things in available for your build depending on your ratings now they did say builder and badge deuce is coming soon more of it probably not for a couple weeks though so that's why i'm dropping this video to help you all out uh but yeah no quick stops once again for 2k24 another confirmed thing that we talked about earlier but there's another tweet confirming it so yeah in small guards if you don't like that maybe you want to make a new build you can read this tweet over oh, basically mike wayne's just talking about how they really buff paint defense like it was the biggest key thing they looked at so if you wanted to go back to mashing like you did in 23 and abuse the paint might not be a thing in 2k24 but we'll have to see we're gonna hold mike wayne accountable for this one because it's usually not true here's wolf another gameplay dev who literally creates the gameplay for 2k uh, this is actually his first year doing it so and he was a 2k league lockdown so i think he's going to be a good addition for 2k but anyways he's talking about the perimeter defense less sliding so my lockdowns any build with good defense you already know that's a huge w uh more re responsive control huge w body up animations that's going to be very i mean there's so many good things like body up animations so once someone's driving to the basket you jump at them they're not just going to dunk through your body you're actually going to get a body up animation less slidings more bumps bro i'm telling you you're gonna have fun in this game if you upgrade your defense and i'm definitely gonna do it quick drops are gone for 2k24 thank god if you uh, disagree with this then i mean we don't even need to argue with you we know what you were doing in 2k23 so this is another very key thing going back to my builds with uh 60 something three pointers and i'm i think this is gonna make it even easier for me to shoot that 60 something three pointer but basically mike wang is saying that shooting badges don't impact your percentages like they used to now they either modify shooting attributes shot window sizes or both so that means let's say i make the two way slash playmaker type of build where i have like a 65 three pointer right and i have i don't know if this badge is going to exist in 2k24 but let's say i have silver agent threes instead of that boosting my percentage when i shoot a shot off the dribble or a shot off you know dribble move then stop and pop it's going to boost my rating so like i don't know how crazy it is maybe on silver it boosts by like seven so i have a 72 three pointer off that shot instead of a 65 but that's key i feel like this is gonna make your bet is more important so when you're making your build it's not gonna be all about attributes the badges you are able to unlock are gonna be even more important now so another thing anybody that was complaining about shot timings like changing randomly they've been toned down not completely just a one shot time but when you make your custom jump shot look at the shot timing stability that is the grade you want in the a plus if you 
hate that feature how the shot timings change all the time and once again it's gonna be green or miss good news for slashers there is a turboing thing in the game i think that's the drill move thing where like you can throw the ball out in front of you through traffic and then like drive to the basket or you know even if you're dribbling down the court there's gonna be another a bunch of new moves for shot creators you know mid-range phase even slashes for euros floaters reverse hop steps and i'm not gonna lie this was kind of obvious with the pro play stuff we talked about the pro play animation so any like Kyrie layups you see him doing or crazy dunks you see john Morant doing or euros floaters that maybe tony parker steve nash did you're probably gonna see them as animations in 2k24 and once again i said this earlier but mike wang said since no one asked you can also use the dunk meter for standing dunks i don't know if that's gonna be overpowered but once again dunk meters green or miss in 2k24 now i've been told y'all this the whole time and a bunch of y'all were commented under my videos where i did like 143 point 140 dunks saying oh the stats don't go above nine bro it's always been like this and people were like oh and i showed up mike wang tweet from like 2018 2019 that confirmed it and people were like oh well, that was 2018 Bro, it's the same thing. And he confirmed it again right here. So he said, yes, TakeOver can temp temporarily boost your ratings over 99. It will make a difference. So yes, if you have a 99.3 and you activate shooting TakeOver, 110.3, it's going to be noticeable, bro. I tried to tell y'all this before, but y'all didn't want to listen. So once again, it is confirmed in 2K24. So going back to the strength thing, if you guys didn't know, Cesar and Wolf, both of these guys in the tweet both create the gameplay for 2k cesar is literally saying so which one of y'all is going to be recommending 25 strength this year i'm telling y'all man strength might be big for locks where you're trying to bump someone you know they even talked about it's really important for centers for even just getting a rebound and if you don't have strength you're basically going to be impossible for you to get a rebound whether whatever kind of position you are and of course driving to the basket i'm sure strength will matter as well i really don't know if i'm gonna have strength i'm gonna try to see if i can get away with it but if it sacrifices too much, bro, I don't know. We'll have to see. It's definitely something I'm thinking about. Now, this is massive news for takeovers. Probably the biggest, one of the biggest news in this video. So basically how takeovers are going to work is they're, they're not going to be how they were before. So you know how we had like limitless, spot up precision, finishing moves, like remove all of those from your head. None of those exist anymore. There is going to be five takeovers. One that's finishing, one that's shooting, one that's playmaking, one that's defense rebound and a physicals takeover. So keep in mind, you might think, okay, that's kind of crazy, but think about it for a second. Finishing takeover. That's probably going to be slashing and post scoring takeover combined because all the post scoring attributes are in finishing. All the dunking attributes, layup attributes are in finishing. That finishing takeover might be the most overpowered takeover in the game. Shooting takeover is basically been the same. I mean, you know, it's going to be like sharp and shot creating takeover combined. So fadeaways, jump shots, standstills, deep shots, all of that's going to be in shooting takeover. Playmaking takeover is going to be the how it was in 2K20. You know, I'm sure ankle breakers, uh, you know, you're going to be faster with the ball. You're going to throw faster passes, probably boost your teammates shots. If you have playmaking takeover activated, you pass it to them defensive rebounding is going to be one of the most overpowered takeovers as well because you're going to have glass takeover rim take and lock take basically combined in this takeover you're going to get better bump animations you're going to get better defensive animations in the paint and on the perimeter you're going to get more steals you're going to get more blocks and you're going to get more rebounds i mean this might be the takeover i pop every single time and then the physical takeover this is going to be the takeover that's either the worst one in the game or the best one in the game i don't know but y'all let me know what you guys think about it I mean, it's going to make you way faster, probably. It's going to make you accelerate more with the ball. You're going to be way stronger. You're going to be able to jump higher. Your stamina is also going to last way longer. My dribblers, physical takeover might be the way for y'all. Another thing is like, like Mike Wayne was saying, how you can go over the 99 thresholds, bro. What if you have a 99 speed? You activate physical takeovers. He said it's going to be noticeable. So what if you have like 110 speed? Not only that, but we're going to show in a later tweet in this video as well. These takeovers give you plus 10 attributes. So if you have finishing takeover, all your finishing stats are going to go up plus 10. Same with shooting, plumbing, and defensive physicals. So that was confirmed by Mike Wang. Y'all will see later in the video, I'm sure. Yeah, here's another couple words about the new takeover system, how it's going to work. Basically, the takeover system is not going to be in the builder. So when you're in a game, you, when you get takeover, it's going to show all five of the takeovers up on the screen. You're just going to pick which one you want. So it's going to be definitely a W. You can just try them all out. And this is Mike Wayne confirming once again what 
the attributes, how they'll be affected with the takeover. So your Mechwing says they will go up plus 10 in that category, depending on which one you choose. So now that we got all the news out of the way, here is the build that I'm going to be eyeing in 2K24. Let me know what build you guys are going to be making and what information you took from this video that you're going to be thinking about a lot when it comes to your first 2K24 build. But anyways, I'm going to be going with a point guard. I don't know what position y'all are in the comments. Let me know. What do y'all be running? I'm, I need some new teammates too for 2K24, but we're going to be streaming all the time in 2K24. I'm going to need some mods as well. So y'all let me know in the comments. Anyways, yeah, I always go with point guard. I always want to be a point guard in 2K. So that's what I'm going to go with. Left-handed because that's just what I prefer. Uh, and number one for Derek Rose. Anyways, so we got height, okay? Now, when they were talking about the pro animations, they were really getting like crazy at 6'9". Like you're not going to have a lot of drill moves. That's how it seemed like. They're definitely going to patch the heck. They're going to make sure this height is not nearly as good. Uh, That's the tallest you can go at point guard. So I do think 6'8", six, 6'7", six, is still pushing a little bit. Maybe 6'7", might be viable. But for my kind of play style, I want to ISO on the ones and the twos. Maybe play some threes every once in a while. I think 6'4", is probably the lowest height I would go. Potentially, there's no way I go 6'3", and under. So I think the range could be anywhere from 6'4", to 6'7", with my build in 2A24. But I think the money height is going to be 6'6". Six, six. I don't know why. I just think 6'6", six, six is going to be that height. Now, obviously, we're in the 2K23 builder, so it's not going to look exactly like this, but I'm just giving you all a gist of what I'm thinking. Uh, weight. Now, this is something I have no clue. I'm going to have to mess around in the builder with my weight because that's going to affect my strength. So I don't know. Uh, we might go somewhere in the middle. It depends on how it affects my speed. Like right here, I could go all the way up here and it's not going to really affect my speed. I'll probably go like, right, you know, 220. That's that's like 40 pounds over the minimum weight. You know, I still get a 90 speed, you know, eight something. I feel like that something in the middle like that will probably be the best way to go if I do want to get strength. Otherwise, I go minimum weight. And then wingspan, I'm always going max wingspan. Definitely going max wingspan, especially since I'm going to have a low three-pointer regardless. And this is going to make my defensive finishing stats better as well. And it's not even going to affect my ball handling stats, right? It is making my strength a little lower, but I don't care. Defense is my main point for this build and uh yeah it's gonna be good i usually go with compact body shape anyways i said my number one thing was gonna be defense and playmaking you know maybe sacrifice some shooting and finishing i don't know about playmaking and finishing though we might interchange those i'll talk about that later speed and excel i'll probably max out with the physical strength like i don't know like me like i'll probably max it out vertical i'm sure i'll need like at least a 75 vertical for some animation stamina probably go with a 95 now with the shooting like i said we'll probably go with like a 65 i'm sure there'll be ways to get extra badges and stuff so and we don't know how the badges are gonna work with the bad systems it might be a total badge count because like we were saying earlier it's gonna be you're gonna get badges based off your play style so th these badge numbers i'm not even gonna pay attention to right now i'm just really focusing on the stats so don't pay attention to the badge count because that's probably not even going to exist in 2K24. And if it does, or then I'll like raise the mid range, you know what I'm saying? We'll raise something else to get the badge. We maybe go 68, you know, at the, we'll go 68, 68. We'll do 68. Perimeter defense, 95 perimeter defense, did 85 something steel block. Definitely maxing that out. Hopefully I can go higher with my build in 2K24. Uh, and then rebounding, I want at least like a 75 rebound. And then of course, max interior defense, especially hearing that body up animations from one of those gameplay devs, that's gonna be better. So I probably go higher on some of these defensive stats, but we're gonna see later on uh, what we can upgrade, but ball handle. And I don't even know what I'm gonna do yet. We're gonna have to see when we get our hands on the builder. And let me know what you guys think in the comments. So obviously I'm gonna have high defense, good physicals, and like, I'm gonna sacrifice my three, right? We know those three things for sure. I don't know what I'm gonna do. Am I gonna go with like an 80? ball handle and then like a 90 plus dunk or am i gonna go with a 90 plus ball handle and like an 80 dunk 78 dunk something like that it really depends on the animations available with the pro play like if the pro play dribble moves are good at like an 80 the and the, the, the animations i like then i'll go with that but if the dunk animations are still good at like 78 maybe i'll go with that because I know the cost is going to be high. So we'll just assume that some of the pro play animations are fire at the lower end here. So I'll probably go like 80 smooth ball, 80 ball handle, you know, 70 pass accuracy, a 90 dunk with like a 75 layup up the rebounding, get the steal to a 90. I mean, I think something like this. This will probably be something 
like my build will look like. Crazy defensive stats, either decent playmaking and high finishing, or decent finishing, high playmaking, and then sacrifice my three. This is probably something I go with, and obviously the takeover system is not going to exist in 2K24. Um, it's not gonna be in the builder, so it's gonna be more in gameplay. So I'll probably be activating lock slash or probably sharp takeover because I'm gonna have a 68-3. But I'm gonna have a 78-3 in takeover. Like that's gonna be good enough, bro. I'm gonna be fine with a low three-pointer. This is really what I'm thinking. I feel like this is gonna be fire, bro. Even with this badge count, five shooting badges. I'll just put all the extra badges I get all year on shooting, then activate sharp takeover every time I get takeover. I'm telling you. This is already getting me excited. Like, I'm about to screenshot this build. This is going to be something I'm going to make. Now, obviously, the build name is going to be, you know, completely different in 2K24. But yeah, this is what I'm eyeing in 2K24. Let me know what you're eyeing in 2K24. Be on the lookout for some videos soon. You know what I'm saying? And uh, yeah, drop a like, subscribe to the channel. It's been your boy, Henry, aka Double H. I'm out of here, man. Peace.